Well, it's a controversial debate that reignites after every shark attack in this country. Should we catch and kill sharks? This week, a teenage girl survived a horror attack in Queensland, while two fatal maulings in eight months in South Australia's Eyre Peninsula has prompted local councils to consider shark culls, with a motion on the measure to be voted on in May. Nationwide states have different control methods. In Queensland, that government uses nets and drum lines at 86 popular beaches, targeting dangerous species of shark and euthanising them. Our final question for the jury is, is a shark cull needed in Australia? Joining us now is Liberal MP Keith Pitt, former Water Minister, who led the charge for a cull in far north Queensland, and Lauren Sanderman, ocean conservationist and marine bio biologist who has been in the shark bite mitigation sector for four years. Great to be with you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Keith, this latest attack with the horrific mauling of a 13-year-old girl was very lucky to survive. It was actually at your local beach, so you're quite familiar with this. In the past, you've led calls for shark culls, but why do you think now's the time to catch and kill? Oh, well, I think it was the time before, <laughs> last year, 10 years ago. Mm. So the fundamentals are pretty straightforward. Mm. Everyone I talk to that's an amateur fisherman, a professional fisherman, tell me that they are in plague proportions. We saw a change, and if I, th if I recall this correctly, uh, Peter Garrett changed the rules back in, you know, just before 2010, mm. to stop the shark take, to stop them uh, doing the fishing of sharks. And those sharks are now 10 years older, 10 years bigger, more of them. And the numbers are pretty straightforward. The number of shark bites in the last decade has more than doubled from what it was the decade before. Mm -hmm. uh, Australia worldwide has the second most attacks in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm for people. And I'm for protecting humans. And we've had these mitigation measures for a long time. They've worked for a long time. But if there are more sharks and more people, we have more interactions and more bad outcomes. And for that young girl in my patch, she was incredibly fortunate, mm. incredibly fortunate. Mm -hmm. So I'm for protecting your mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and children. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of the day, we cull a lot of animals in this country. Mm. Uh, we, we control the population of ferals, which is, which is fine. We control kangaroos. We control wombats in national parks. So why wouldn't we control shark numbers? OK. Uh, Lauren, on the other end here, I mean, as Keith has mentioned, we've got a lot of mitigation practices, but yet the statistics are still quite high. Why do you think culling is not the answer? Well, because if your objective is to reduce the risk of a shark bite occurring, culling isn't going to achieve that objective simply because that is what decades of research and evidence in shark bite mitigation tells us. Because when the occurrence of a shark bite isn't determined by the size of the local shark population, the rise in shark bites that we're seeing in Australia and, and around the world is predominantly determined by the drastic increase in the number of people we're seeing in the ocean. More people is leading to more interactions. Now, when it comes to shark bites and culls, we know from decades of evidence and culling historically that it doesn't improve the rate of shark bites. Hawaii operated a cull for 17 years to reduce the rate of shark bites, and it made no difference in the rate of shark bites before, during, or after that cull. Here in Australia, we, own, we run the world's longest culling policies in Queensland and New South Wales. And the consistent advice on those policies isn't to intensify and expand them, but it's to immediately terminate them and replace them with effective modern measures that we know reduce the risk of a shark bite occurring. Mm -hmm. oh, I, mean, th I mean, that's a fair point. We've got more people in the water. So, uh, naturally, something like this could definitely occur. I mean, what, why do we need to go down the catch and kill pathway. I, I want to protect humans. Mm. And why shouldn't we protect them? I, I keep hearing this argument, Danica, about it's their environment, we're well, in it. But it is their environment, is it well, not? Well, my house is in the environment that's got king browns and red belly blacks, but I don't keep them in the kitchen. I mean, th th these are reasonable responses. Uh, they are an apex predator. Mm -hmm. And what is wrong with controlling the numbers? We control the biomass of almost everything else in the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our fishermen that are utilised uh, by people who uh, watch what they do, they use that for the count. We have bag limits. We have all of those things in terms of control measures. Mm -hmm. And onshore, we do it for nearly anything. Right. And with the current mitigation methods, are they successful in your view? No, they absolutely are not. And that's it's very easy to sling around good headliners saying we'll put humans ahead of sharks, but it's very hard to well, actually back that, that up. It's very hard to actually back that up with evidence because the best way to keep people safe is to deploy the measures that we know actually works and certainly not to tell them and cull sharks it's saying that it's going to keep them safe, which gives them a false sense of security and actually puts people more at risk if they think they're being protected when they're not. Now, the measures that 
I'm not saying that we're, by not culling we should do anything. There are plenty of methods that we can and should be expanding in the water and in our communities to keep people safe. Culling is not one of those options. Now, those measures include expanded surf life-saving measures, drone surveillance, community education, as well as uptakes in, you know, personal deterrent devices, which the Western Australian government actually offers a subsidy for the devices that prove that they can help reduce the risk of a shark interaction occurring. Well, hang on a minute. I was a surf lifesaver for 10 years. It is very, very difficult to see if the water's murky, the, the lighting's not right, to You're get correct, it clear enough to see sharks. which is why a layer of different measures difficult. is important. We need to have layers of different mitigation measures. But at the end of the day, no matter how many measures you put in place, your safety is not guaranteed. You cannot have a zero-risk policy when it comes to a wild environment. You cannot domesticate the ocean. Queensland takes over 600 a year with the current mitigation measures. So drum lines and shark nets, uh, the average is over 600 a year. Now, that is a cull. Right? Let, let's not mess around here. They take sharks that are caught on drum lines in areas that are habit, uh, where people uh, go regularly, or whether that's my local beach at Nelson Park or Kelly's or elsewhere. Why would you want to take away the measures that have clearly worked for decades? And if there's better ones, great, implement them. But why can't we control the biomass of sharks? They are a fish like anything else. Because they are so fundamental to the ecological importance of our marine environment that you jeopardise healthy shark populations, you destabilise the health and sustainability of the entire ecosystem, including the very fish stocks fishermen, I assume, would like to keep in the ocean. Now, you talk about tiger sharks and white sharks, which are the most responsible shark species for shark bites. These are highly migratory species. They don't stick around locally. So in order for a cull to actually be effective due to how insignificant the risk of a bite is, right. you have to cull that species to the brink right of extinction. Right until it's you that gets bitten. All right. OK, right until... <clears throat> until you get bitten or one of your children or one of your relatives. Okay. I know people who have been victims of shark attacks. I wouldn't risk a shark bite on anybody. OK, you have both had your say. It is time to call on the jury. The question is, do we need a nationwide shark cull? You have 10 seconds to deliberate. <laughs> jury members, what have you decided? OK, we've only got two yeses and the rest of you mm. say no, we do not need a nationwide shark call.